I changed locations. Hopefully, this time you get it going working. I changed locations this time. Maybe it was me. Whatever it is, IG ain't trying to let us be great this Monday. Whatever's going on. Okay, this is the last time. Then we're going to just start fresh from the top. We're going to run it back from the top. I know it's been in and out a little bit. There we go. I bet you it was me this whole time. Bet you with me this whole time. Yo, yo. Yo, it might have been me this whole time. I guess I ran out of luck in my basement. <laughs> might have been me. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. You know how I go, though, man. Technology is crazy. I'm, I don't even know. I don't even be trying to figure it out, bro. But hey, yeah. I know we got a lot to talk about, a lot of hoops, man. So I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm locked in. I'm tuned in. All right, so we ran it down, did the, uh, did the AU scene. Mm -hmm. You hooped your eighth grade year for your middle school. That was the year I had it. Um, going from there, so after middle school, what, what did the basketball look like for you? Um, after middle school, I went to uh, Southern Maryland Christian Academy. That's also out here okay. in Waldorf. It's a little mm -hmm. past uh, White Plains. And, um, man, we had a mob. We was independent. Um, I played with some dogs, man. Um, you know, that was, that was ninth and tenth. Um, as a freshman, played varsity. Um, you okay. know, sophomore play varsity. Yeah. Then, um, actually before even going into Southern Maryland, you know, it was, I mean, everybody was knocking down the door, obviously the Mathers, okay. the PVIs, yeah. The St. John's, um, you know, any school you can think of, you know, especially WCAC, um, yeah. was knocking yeah. down, was knocking, was knocking down the door, you know, trying to get me to go there, man. But, you know, um, everything got a, kind of correspond with it, with one another, you know, going from Waldorf to DC and walk to from Waldorf to Gonzaga. Ah, that's kind of tough. Yeah. Out, you know what I mean? With the ride situation and stuff yeah. like that. So yeah. um Southern Maryland Christian Academy called. It was a new school opening up. Um they they had been I mean they they didn't necessarily open up, but their basketball program was kind of like taking a turn in a better right direction. They had a new coach. Okay. And, Okay. And yeah, so I said, man, uh, you know, why not? You know, why not? And um, you know, it was it was it was close to my house. I figured I'd go there. Yeah, Play, yeah played as a freshman, like I said, varsity, um, and sophomore uh, as a sophomore too. Play varsity um, before transferring up the road. So that was that was that little short stint. Okay. Um, okay. There. So yep. And when you how was when you left there? But, let me think back a little bit. So, who were y'all playing against when you were out there? Like, what other schools were y'all playing against? Great question. Well, man, we it was the bump was 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 legit. I mean, we okay. played, we playing Lawnburg, we're playing National ah. Fishing Academy, Riverdale yeah. Baptist. Y'all um, getting it in? Y'all was yeah. getting it in? Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, we were independent, so we literally could play anybody. Like, yeah, I mean, yeah. I remember we played uh, M.M. Washington. Um, like we were playing some some teams, man, and mm -hmm. um, you know, and it was it was great bump, you know, coming from middle school straight to playing varsity as a freshman. It was yeah. great. It was great bump, and I played with some guys like uh, Mike Battle. Um, I played with the uh, with Rob Pressy, Rashad Mintz. I mean, the list goes on to the, the talent that we had on our team, Mo Douglas. Um, but it was it, it, you know, it was great to be able to play with those guys um, that first year. But, you know, playing against a national Christian that had Abdullah Jallo, uh, Chris Matthews, most people know him as Lethal Shooter. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, Deron Washington, um, a young KD, you yeah. know, Kevin Durant. He was a, he was on, uh, he was playing varsity as a freshman starting. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that um, that competition, man, was, was crazy. It was just like out of this world, you know what I mean? Be, mm. Especially being a young player coming into playing straight varsity as a, as a ninth grader. So. Hey, you got some real good experience in your first two years. Yeah, I did, and that was and that was one of the main things. Is I, I you know, I, of course, I, I had the confidence to know that I could play varsity. As soon as I walk in the door, it just mm -hmm. going to the right situation, and I just wanted to go to the right situation. And at that time, that that situation was right. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. All right, so then that that's when you came to friendly. I wasn't there. That's when you came to friendly after that junior year. 
Yeah, so my, my 10th grade year, I found out that Southern Maryland Christian Academy wasn't accredited. Ah. And, yeah, and I had, um, you know, I had been hearing that, but then I finally got the final word that it was. And um, throughout those years of ninth and 10th grade, even back in the eighth grade, honestly, but, like, eighth, ninth, and 10th, uh, friendly coach, um, you know, I would always see them at my AAU games, man. You know, um, I would always, like, they would always be talking to me and my parents, trying to get me to come there. Um, and, you know, uh, I was able to say once I was trying to transfer, like, you know what, man, I'm transferring. Let me see what the best option is. And friendly, I knew they had, they came off, they had just came off two, two state championships, 03 and 04 with yeah, Sam yeah. and Chris. Um, and I remember them too. They, they, they were dogs, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I said, man, well, I'm gonna go, go ahead and go to friendly, you know, coach Moore. um, you know, I had knew him growing up. Uh, rest in peace to his soul and Coach Walker, who I actually coach alongside with now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, um, you know, he he really was heavily um, showing very very good interest because um, I knew he. I'm guessing he knew that he was gonna have the head job, and uh, right. I went with it. I trusted my gut. My parents trusted it, and I went to friendly man for my my 11th and um, 12th grade year, and. You know, it was a, it was a great time, man. Hooping under Coach Walker and the teammates and the, the people that I met, you know, playing ball, um, putting on that, uh, you know, that friendly jersey. Mm -hmm. I remember how was y'all? I remember your 12th grade. We're gonna get to that, but how did the 11th grade year go? Well, what it was that season like? It, yeah, it went up and down. I, I feel like it could have went a little better if we had a little bit more chemistry um, on that on that team. Uh, we had some mm -hmm. good players. Uh, myself, Justin, Jack. Uh, Angelo Reese, um, and then the guys I graduated with, Mike Wright, Walter mm -hmm. Scott, uh, Gus was on that team, Gus is Gilchrist. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but we just couldn't get the chemistry right going. Um, for whatever reason, everybody had, you know, their egos was, was all over the place. But um, that junior year mob, man, was, was it was pretty good. We, could, we, we beat some teams, but mm -hmm. at the end of the day, the chemistry kind of showed uh, when it okay. counted, and we weren't able to um get some wins that we should have but um you know, like you said my senior year though man that was that was a special team yeah y'all had a mob i uh i think like a few months ago i was like talking to jaymon about it like mm -hmm. i just remember being a freshman and seeing that mob yeah. like bro y'all look like a whole college team when i was coming <laughs> as a freshman yeah that 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 team man was special you know you had mm -hmm. myself james stewart rest in peace of his soul yeah, man. Um, james, yeah. yeah mike wright jay hayden uh, a better, a better Gus Walter Scott. I mean, the list goes on. Eric Moore. Um, yeah, like we were, yeah. we that 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 was a special team. Um, my mm -hmm. senior year, man, being able to carry those guys, and um, you know, do some things that the, the school hasn't done since that 014 uh, was kind of special. Um, but mm -hmm. the practices was crazy and uh, competitive, man. Playing with those guys, man, going to war with those dudes. It was, it was crazy, bro. Like. Yeah. And, and and then even going down to the JV guys, the the AJs and the the Mark Daniels and the Chris Nantons, and I'm not man, the the the, the young fellas was bumping, you know what I mean? Yeah, Tony, yeah. Uh, little Tony, and, man, it was it was crazy, man. So that same year, man, I, I it was it was special for real. Yeah, definitely was, definitely was. Yeah. All met that year, um, played in the Capital Classic with 14 or 15 that Capital Classic game. Mm -hmm. And like I just remember your name ringing out again. That's when the Gazette was was everything. And yeah. I just remember y'all was always in the Gazette. They always highlighted you. But after Friendly, you went the prep route. Can you just expand on how the prep, how that decision came about? Yeah, well, I went. I had to. I end up not qualifying, so I signed early to East Carolina University. And some people don't even know this story, but I signed going into my senior year, right before the season in November. Okay. You know, tryouts. The, the 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 national tryout day is November fifteenth. Yeah, that's, that's that's judgment day. <laughs> that's judgment day for a lot of people. So, mm -hmm. uh, in November, I signed with East Carolina. I went on a visit. I loved it. Coach Stokes showed me outstanding love, man, and I signed. End up not qualifying. Didn't do well on my test scores that year. So I end up having to go to prep school route. Okay. So what I did was I I, I looked up some prep schools. Um, I did some research. And prep school end up, um, I end up going. Atlanta was the best fit. Um, you know, you had your Pattersons and you had your other prep schools, but um, that uh, North Atlanta prep uh, was was the best option. Um, I was able to go down there and play for uh, Dominique Wilkins' older brother. 
Okay. Okay. Yeah, he, he was the head coach down there. Um, I, I, you know, man, I had a, I had a, a great prep school year because I felt like I had to prove myself again. Mm -hmm. Um, because not, not only, um, I, you know, I kind of jumped the gun. I felt like after a while with signing early to East Carolina, um, and it was a lot of schools that kind of, you know, wish I would have waited it out, but going to prep gave me that opportunity to, to now I, it opened up my recruitment. Yeah. So yeah, I went down there, man. And I bought out, man, uh, uh, top a hundred in the nation, um, average 20 points or a little under 20, uh, eight rebounds. Um, I shot 53% from the field. Officially. Yeah, that's, that stands out when you get in the yeah. of a game. That stands out. Yeah. yeah, and then, you know, it was one of those things where, like I said, I had to prove myself because we were playing against all JUCO, Juco colleges at the time. Um, okay. we played, we, yeah, we played a few prep schools, but it was more so the junior colleges that we were playing with, playing against. So um, prep was a good experience, man. It gave me an extra year to get prepared mm -hmm. for college. Yeah. So after the prep year, like you, you, you clearly say it opened up um, recruitment for you, but then you ended up at St. Bonaventure. What other schools were in play before you signed with St. Bonaventure? Oh, man, it was a lot. And and now that I'm coaching, it's funny because I, now I'm starting to understand the business side of it, even, mm -hmm. playing, even playing professionally. So when I was, you know, when I was at 19, 20 points a game, shooting 53% from the field, oh, it was all types of schools, you know, Cincinnati, um, a lot of the Georgia schools, Kennesaw State. Um, you know, they showed some interest, uh, Minnesota. Okay. Uh, I mean, it was a lot of schools, you know, yeah, and, yeah. and, and what happened was I ended up getting hurt. Yeah. yeah towards, towards the end. And it kind of hurt my recruitment a little bit because, you know, they didn't know I broke my ankle. So they didn't know, okay. you know, how I would come back from that. Yeah. Um, and what happened was I rehabbed hard. Um, I got back at it after some time off and, um, St. Bonaventure came, and their coach had just got the job, Coach Mark Schmidt. Shout out to him, man. You know, he, he got the job, and he was just like, hey, you know, I was his first recruit. He came okay. down. He came down and seen me work out, and um, he I signed, man. And it was a blessing to be able to, at that time, go to a Power 5 school. Um, Atlantic yeah. 10 was actually number five. It was uh, number five in the conference in the nation. Okay. So, and, I mean, talking about – Playing in A ten, that's it another story, man. That's, that's another tough. story. Oh man, that, <laughs> the, 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 I mean, it was crazy, man. So, yep. So, um, one year there, one year. Mm -hmm. Did anything, anything particular happen, or it just didn't align? It just didn't work out. Okay. Um, you know, some situations just like that, man. Yeah, you know, yeah, I, yeah. I, I got there. I started as a freshman, um, but of course, like every other freshman, unless you're Zion Williamson or KD or Mike Beasley, I hit a freshman wall. Okay. Um, never could respond from the freshman wall. Um, and okay. then on top of hitting the freshman wall, I got hurt. Um, you know, and outside of that, it, it just it, it just didn't fit. You know, coach saw a different plan than I saw. So, mm -hmm. um, hey, it happens. It's a part yeah. of the game. You know what yeah. I mean? So. I entered, I entered the, the protocol, um, and, you know, you and me at a few, few schools, Florida State was really heavily re um, recruiting me. But um, UMES, man, it's just something about UMES and Coach Frankie Allen. Shout out to Coach Frankie Allen, man. He just – he sold me. He sold yeah. me. And, and yeah. some people say I'm crazy. You pick <laughs> UMES over Florida State. Uh, it, it's just about the fit, man. Yeah, for sure. Fit. Yeah, for so sure. I, I end up going – Sticking to um, UMES sitting out a year, uh, red yeah. shirt a year. Yeah, but UMES it definitely took it took back off at UMES. You uh -huh. like you were playing your natural game again. That score on the wing. What was that experience like? Well, UMES man, like I said, that, that the college was the best times of my life, man. Um, mm -hmm. You know, especially uh, you know basketball wise, because you know it was it was your life. You know, what I mean, you wake up, practice, work out, play games, and then you just have fun. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, so it was, it was good, man. I, I scored a thousand points. I was a thousand points score, 1400 to be exact in three years. Bucket. Yeah. 1400 in three years, man. Um, like you said, coach, coach Allen allowed me to play my game. I remember sitting in a meeting with him and, uh, he asked me what he thought my role, what I thought my role should be. And, you know, as a young player, I'm trying to kind of be politically correct. And he's like, no, your role is to score the basketball. Like I, I've seen you scored efficiently on a lot of levels <laughs> you know yeah. what i mean so yeah. so i'm bringing you in here 
um, coming from a power five to do what you do. And, you know, that kind of gave me that confidence too, you know, because anytime you can play for a coach that gives you that type of confidence, oh, man, the, the basket looked like <laughs> Sandy Point Beach Ocean. That joint <laughs> was huge, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, man, that, it was a fun experience, man. Being able to score and, and get all conference, and yeah. wish we wish we could have won a little bit more because obviously the scoring is just per, personal accolades, but you know didn't didn't work that way. But yes, all right, cool. So after that, right when you left UMES, did you go straight to playing professionally overseas, or did you take some time off? I did, man. I did. I went. I went straight. I went straight. Um, I graduated in two thousand and twelve in May. I signed my mm -hmm. first deal in 2012 in uh, October. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. So uh, it was my, my first gig was in Nova Scotia, Canada. Um, shout out to uh, Nova Scotia. Anybody from Canada that's watching, literally, man, that is the best city and country I have ever been in. For real? 100%, uh, man. The, 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 the fan support, you know, the youth support. I mean, you really – the NBL Canada is really almost like the D League or the G League now. Like, okay. you know, every team plays in a hockey arena. Um, you know, the fan support is just crazy. Um, you know, kids come to the games. They're, they're into it. I mean, it, that, that, that experience, man, was great. And, you know, I had the, the, the pleasure of actually playing for my rookie year, Cliff Levingston. And, okay. if, and, you know, if you know basketball, you yeah, know Cliff yeah. Davidson was on that 91-92 Chicago Bulls team. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and if you go back, because I, I noticed you said earlier that you've been watching a lot of Hardwood Classics and stuff in basketball. So yeah. if you go back and if you watch that game that comes on sometime, the play when Michael Jordan came down the lane against the Lakers like he was going to dunk it and he switched to the left, Yeah. Cliff Livingston actually threw him that pass. That's uh, tough. That's tough. Yeah. I gotta go yeah. back and look at that. Yeah, yeah. Just, trust me. Trust me. He reminds me every day. <laughs> if it wasn't for him, right? If it yeah, wasn't for every, him, <laughs> every day he reminded me, bro. But yeah, that 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 experience, man, and, uh, as a rookie was great. Playing for him and the exactly. knowledge that he gave me, it was it was crazy. So, all right, cool, cool. Yeah. How long did you how long did you play professionally? I know you played in Morocco too, right? Yeah, I, so I did six years. I did. Okay. Uh, yeah, I did a year. I did a Ireland. I did Morocco. I did Denmark. Mm -hmm. I mean, I did a um, I did an ABA year. I I, I did a, a a quick little D League stint. Uh, not even like not even a not even a month and a half, like a month. Okay. Um. Okay. Yeah. But my, the, but the countries was uh, Denmark, Morocco, Ireland, um, and and uh, Nova Scotia. So that's where okay. I, I spent most of my my time playing. All right. So when you decide, all right, I'm done playing. Um, I saw you in all the leagues. Like I remember, like reconnect, like that's pop, that's pop from back in the day. Reconnected back mm -hmm. in all the leagues. Um, how did that decision come? Like you know, I'm done with, with my playing career, but now I want to transition and then helping yeah. um, some kids get there as well. Yeah, well, you know, at some point in time in your life, you got to look at it like, okay, where am I going with this? Like, you know what I mean? Okay. And for basketball, at, at, I was just turning, I was turning thirty, and you know. Nowadays, man, you got these 19 and 21 year old. I mean, LaMelo Ball went overseas, he was 17. Yeah. You know what I mean? So these owners are saying now, and now, I, as I stated earlier, the business part of basketball started kicking in. So okay. now you have, you know, you got these 16, 17, 22 year old kids that, that want to get their foot in the door like I was when I was that age. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much taking the bare minimum to prove themselves or taking whatever contract they can get to prove themselves. And, you know, if I'm an owner of a team, I got a 30, 31 year old or 21 or 22 or 17 year old coming in. Uh, I kind of going to take my chances with that 17 to 21 year old kid, supposed to a guy that's kind of on his way out, at, you know, at 30. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. and um, cause you know, once you hit 30, it's a downhill spiral from there. So, <laughs> You know, I just try to, and and, and honestly, man, that's a, it's, it's a huge shout out to all the guys, all my hooping guys that's that's playing at a high level after thirty, man. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's tough, man. It's tough. So I, a huge shout out to them for that. But uh, yeah, when I when I um end up going, man, I was I was thinking to myself what I wanted to do next. I know mm -hmm. I always wanted to coach. Um, I always wanted to coach. I just didn't know when and like what level. 
Um, so, like, even th in the summer times when I was playing pro ball, I would come home and I would run little camps. Um, yeah, I coached yeah. directly. I wrote. I coached a rec league team. Um, you know, even when I was overseas, I was doing stuff in my community and my country okay. I was in. Okay. Yeah. So I always knew I wanted to coach, but I didn't know when. But then when I decided to hang them up, um, I called uh, Coach Walker. Uh, and Coach Walker was my coach, as you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, I said, man, you know, I'm looking to get into coaching, man. Um, you know, how, how can you help me? And he said, hey, man, come on over. Come on over. You know, give your knowledge to the youngins. And uh, we got a spot for you on our staff. And That's I was blessed. Sense. Yeah, I was blessed to walk right into a good situation, man, because yeah. end up and end up from day one, man, it, it, it's been great. Yeah, and then like that's that's what I was really excited to talk about, you know. Mm -hmm. That me and uh Coach Jennifer talked about it last weekend playing mm -hmm. in the snack, right? Yeah. You know, you was that friendly, you know how it was. It was all the tensions at DC PG Baltimore, Smack was overlooked a lot. Mm -hmm. So y'all at St. Charles now and y'all have an amazing culture. So whether from the content y'all create to the student section, tell us about, you know, how that culture came to be and you know, in these in these few years. Well, first and first and foremost, man, huge shout out to Coach Walker and Coach Brett Campbell, who's our head coach. Mm -hmm. um, they they were there since the very first day the school opened. Okay, um, and okay. some people some people might not see, um, you know, some people see the success we're having now. But I'm gonna take you back to the very first year in 2014 okay. when the school when the school was built. Um, coach Coach Campbell's the first ever coach to to coach the Spartans. Um, mm -hmm. and Coach Walker been there from, from day one with him. But uh, what people don't know is, man, that the culture had to be built. Um, it wasn't something that already just came in. I mean, back in 2014, you know, North Point was still beating everybody. Uh, Thomas Stone was beating everybody. Westlake was beating everybody. I remember coming to a game in 2014. I was home, I think on Christmas break or something, and I came mm -hmm. to just check out Coach Walker, come check out his team. And I mean, they were getting smacked, and I mean, it was it was their first. They lost their first fifteen games of the season. Okay. They started out zero and fifteen, and um, you know, huge shout out to Coach Campbell and Coach Walker because they trusted the process. Yeah, you know, yeah. they 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 knew that it wasn't going to be overnight. That I mean, that 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 you know, this program is going to be where it is today. You know what I mean? But. You know, they stuck with it. They hired guys like myself. Um, they hired guys like Coach Zeke Horn. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know what I mean? That 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 are all – and there's another thing that people don't really realize is, and when we talk about culture is, none of us are from down here. You know what I mean? We're, we're – all of our body of work has been up the road. You know what I mean? And yeah. so yeah. when, we, when we, we wanted to take this school and really change the culture by having people not think – like you just said, and even how I thought when I was in high school, I knew for a fact, if I'm at Friendly High School in 2006 and high school period, if I'm playing a McDonald's or a Plato, oh, that, they food. Like, I'm not even, I'm not even, even think, cross that out, chalk me down for 20. Like, easily. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So, Coach Zeke Horn played, Coach Walker coached against it, Coach Brett knew because he spent some time at North Point. Oh, and, my myself, and, my, and myself, I knew that how people looked at the smack. So we came together and said, listen, let's change this culture. Let's have people understanding that Waldorf and Smack conference has basketball players. Yeah. And yeah. this year and, and ever since year one, it's been on full display. Yeah, for sure. For yeah. sure. Um I didn't get to catch out many games, but again, I saw, you know, all the videographers I had down there, Capital Hoops. Mm -hmm. um, Mari Effects, one of the young videographers, she's out there all the time. Uh, catching all these games. Did catch y'all at the Hoop Buzz invite at Wise. And that was something I was excited to talk about, too. When that tournament, it was amazing to see so many people that had walked through those same friendly halls involved in the game of basketball. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm sure you could say that about a lot of schools, but you you went to – you was a friendly. You was coaching with, you was coaching with St. Charles. Mm -hmm. Jamon, he was there. He was on the Riverdale staff. Um, yep. Coach Parker, he was there with Fairfax Christian. One yeah. of his former players is on his staff. Mm -hmm. Gardner, he was the coach at. It's amazing to see how many people had walked through those friendly halls and was like deeply involved in the game of basketball. So 
that was something. It was, I thought that was special a little bit just to see that many people there, the friendly, still doing it with the basketball thing. Yeah, it was, man. And, and, and you know, you see guys, um, you know, like you said, like like you play against, like, like a Jaymon, and then you see uh, all the, f- the friendly guys that that you know that came through that program. And it's good to see because you know yeah, they, they're giving yeah. back. They, they're giving back to to not only like their school, but they're giving back to you know their their community and they're giving back yeah. to the youth. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's a, it's good to see that you know, and that's one of yeah. the things that and that's one that's one hundred percent why I do it. You know, I want to give back to my community. I want to give back to develop that next. Hillary Haley, or mm-hmm. that next player that that needs help and development to go through everything that I went through, um, yeah. and, and you know that's that's simply why we do what we do at St. Charles because we really wanted to change the culture, man. And um, hey, I think we <laughs> think we've done a pretty good job of doing it, but every day we still you know figure out ways of keeping it that way. You know, yeah, what I mean? yeah, and um, like going back to this season. You know, coming coming up playoff time, like you know, I'm in the scene, so I kind of knew like they real, they real. Mm-hmm. But you know, I talk to people and they be like, "Oh, Oxen gonna get them, or Oxen didn't get them mm-hmm. for uh, somebody gonna get them, take them, somebody gonna be on Potomac." I meant Potomac, and I was mm-hmm. just like, you know, St. Charles is different. You know, <laughs> I've been following mm-hmm. all year, and it's still some of those, you know, some of those stereotypes like, "Oh, Smack ain't a basketball conference." And I kept telling people like, St. Charles, y'all were on the collision course to match up with Polly in that state championship. Mm-hmm. A lot of people in the basketball community was looking at that. And it, it really, like I said, it opened up people's eyes. Like, I would tell them, like, St. Charles is going to be there. I don't know everybody else, but I know St. Charles is going to be there. And so, like, talk about, like, how the players bought into that as well. Well, one thing that we um, that we pride ourselves on is family and brotherhood okay. and, our three, and our three core principles. You'll see me, my coaching staff, post it all, all over social media, and that's IDU. And a lot of people said, what does IDU stand for? Well, IDU stands for intensity, discipline, and unity. Okay. And that's, those are the three core principles, man. And um, our kids display that. You know, we had seniors that have been in our program since day one. Yeah. You know what I mean? We have, we have seniors that have been in our program and they understand that IDU is what we stand for. So um, that, that was one of the reasons why, you know, we had a lot of success. Um, everybody bought in. I mean – you know, you, 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 we had seniors and players, even underclassmen, man, that watched their seniors and, and, and you know, allowed them to lead them. Um, our leadership was crazy. Um, I feel like each year it's, it's pretty good with leadership, but this year was just something special, man. Those guys really set a goal to win a state championship and or at least to be able to compete for one. I mean, going back to they were organizing runs around neighborhoods before the season, like we weren't organizing it, they were organizing it on ourselves, and that's that's good senior leadership. So I think we really had good senior leadership, and young guys bought into um, what the seniors, uh, you know, was kind of preaching to them. You know what I mean? And that's one of the things that that's what made it special. You know, what I mean, whenever you can get all twelve guys from top to bottom to buy in and know your role and be a star in your role, that's you I mean that that's kind of hard to beat. You know what I mean? Yeah, and that's I'm glad you said that was my next thing. Everyone played their role mm-hmm. to the best of their ability. It was like, I'm I'm here to play defense. That's what I'm gonna do. Mm-hmm. I'm the guy that comes off the bench. I'm making plays, whether that's scoring or setting other people up. Like mm-hmm. for example, um, Amir. He's been a kid I've seen, you know, for the last three four years. Mm-hmm. He came in, you know, in the area, one of the best incoming freshmen. So it's just like. He he bought in on everything that was going there, so that definitely speaks to the leadership, the coaching staff uh-huh. that y'all have down there. So it's just it's just amazing what y'all have done. Like it's just amazing. Uh-huh. I enjoy seeing it. Yeah, man, and 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 you know, it's one of the things that we strive to do and be every day. Like uh-huh. this isn't something that we want to, you know, just strive off for this year. You know what I mean? Um, you know, when you look back to the the, the success the program has had, I mean that Potomac game was Coach Campbell's 100th win. Uh-huh. And that he's the, fastest, he's the fastest coach that's got to 100 wins. He did it in six seasons. I mean, I mean, you, you, you go back to even last year, we were 21 and five. You know, year before that, 19 and seven. You know what I mean? Year before that, 17 and seven. So, I mean, it's just each year the program has grew and gotten better. Yeah. And um, this year we 
you know, obviously uh, being 26 and one, um, you know, that, that, that made everybody be on notice, but we've been trying to change this culture and um, we, we're, we're just going to continue to do it. I mean, just because, you know, we lost seven seniors and, um, you know, just because this year was his historical doesn't mean that the success stops. Yeah. I mean, we're going to, we're going to continue to still send our kids to school. We have a hundred percent rate. All of our kids go to school. You know what I mean? All of our kids develop. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we put our, we put our kids in great positions to, to succeed. I mean, you might see it all the time, just as much as everybody else do. Uh, you know, myself and Coach Zeke, and, and, you know, reference our school in St. Charles as the U. Yeah. Well, yeah. what that means is is St. Charles University. You know what I mean? And the reason we call it the reason, and, and the reason we call it that is because we're gonna put you in the best position to when you get to first of all, you're gonna go to school. But when you're under our watchful eye, you're gonna give, you're gonna develop, you're gonna be a winner, and you're gonna take everything that we've taught you, whether it's your, your throughout your whole four years you're with us. You're one year you're with us. You're two years you're with us. You're going to take that to the next level, and you're going to be able to be successful. And yeah. that's one thing. We take pride in it. It's not one thing that we want to do. We talk about maybe doing it. No, we talk as a staff that this is what we're going to do. And that's just that's just the difference, man. And, you know, this year was very special, man. But I'm looking yeah. forward. I'm looking forward to the unfinished business, though, because you mentioned that poly game and, Man, I'm, I'm I'm not gonna lie. As it got closer and closer and closer to the final four at Xfinity. Oh man, we was licking our chops, man. <laughs> yeah, we was licking yeah. our chops, man. We we yeah. wanted that game, man. Being the number one public school in the state versus the number public, the number two public school in the state. I mean, that game. Let me tell you, man. That game would have looked like University of Maryland was playing. Yeah, yeah, like you that. Know, everybody wanted to see it, but yeah, that, unfortunately, COVID COVID had other plans. Um, and I'm and I'm so unfortunate, man, for our seniors, man. 2020. Shout out to the whole class of 2020, mm -hmm. everywhere sure. because what they had to go through, man, was tough, man. Tough. Yeah. You know, our seniors, you know, I, I've, you know, our seniors, and, and per se, I mean, they were crying, man. Like they, they wanted to go up to Comcast. They had that. They, they, they wanted it, man. And then, and, and you know, they got stripped uh, yeah. away from them with with no control. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean, so. <laughs> You know, happens that way. But I will say, moving forward, man, um, we got unfinished, unfinished business, and it, it it's a it's a it's it's cliche when people really say, "Oh, we'll be back," but we'll be back. <laughs> no, for real, like I yeah. tell, like one of my favorite things, like people hate cliches, but they real, like they real. Yeah, that's what some of the realest things ever is a cliche. One hundred percent. Next year, so who? You lost a lot of seniors. Like, so who are some of the players who have to step up and make a uh, play a bigger role this coming kind of next season? Yeah, of course, man. Um, it, it, it's always tough when you lose seven seniors. Um, you know, when you lose any seniors at all. But we always got a, ne a mentality of next man up. You know, mm -hmm. um, and we even did that this year. I mean, if you look at our game, some of our games, man, some of our seniors, like uh, Max Brooks, he might have gotten foul trouble, but Jermaine Chesley carried us. Jermaine Chesley might got in foul trouble, but Omar McGann, you know, he helped us out. And then here comes Amir Dade as a sophomore. Like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it was a well-balanced attack. Um, you know, we have four guys, uh, average above 12 points a game. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's well. And then one guy peeking in right at 11. Um, so moving forward, uh, we're going to heavily rely on kids like Amir Dade, who now this is his third year of varsity. He should have yeah. the leadership. Um, the leadership. Um, should be there. Um, he's only going to get better. That kid is a workhorse. I mean, mm -hmm. he's always getting extra work in. He's always working on his body and his game, trying to get better. Um, so we're going to heavily rely on him. Uh, Jaden Butler, a six six big. Um, he's the top top ten big in the uh, in the in the area. Okay. Um, so we're going to you know rely on him. He's been on varsity since he was a sophomore. Okay. Uh, so you know he is his third year. So he should know. Um, you know, what it takes to win. Um, and, uh, you know, we got another guard, uh, junior, uh, Devon Carter, um, who, who got minutes for us last year on varsity. So, you know, he's, uh, he's been on our program. He started out, uh, playing JV, mm -hmm. but we moved him up quickly because he displayed, um, talent that, 
you know, you, you got to move up, son. So uh, we, we, we heavily rely on those guys. Um, but I always, I always uh, like to say from now until November, that's a long time. Yeah. And, and you never know who walked through the door. Yeah. And, you know, we've been fortunate every year to have a guy come to us that helped us, that helped this program tremendously. Mm-hmm. Um, and you never know who walked through the door. So yeah. uh, we'll see. Yeah, but yeah. we're looking to definitely uh, keep the momentum going um, from this year's team, um, oh, you know, on to next year's team too, so. All right, all right. Let's, let's take it back to you a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. You played on one of the best AAU teams ever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, he really did. Can you give us some of those um, teammates who played with the Blue Devils, DC Blue Devils, with you? Man, let me tell you, man. And that, 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 you know, we, 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 we really, and one of the reasons why that team doesn't get talked about a lot like these other AAU teams is because honestly, we really only spent one summer together. Okay. Yeah, and, and then most of these other teams spent like four or five years together. We only they really came spent, up through the system, right? We only we, we we really only had one summer all together. Like a few of us might have played sixteen together, a few of us might have played fourteen, but all of us collectively together, we only played. We only had that one run that summer, which okay. was which was amazing. Um, but to go back to answer your question, man, a few guys that were on that team was myself, obviously, uh, Katie. Uh, Jerome Dyson uh, went to UConn. Cliff, Cliff Dixon, rest in peace of his soul. Um, Tywan Lawson, uh, Bobby Mays, Bobby Shannon, Marcus Ashton, um, Corey Allman. Uh, we had um, Mike Freeman. I don't know. A lot of people don't know Mike Freeman, but Mike Freeman was 6'9", lefty, was ranked in the nation, went to Nike camp. I mean, we had uh, Ma. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and, and and it was some of the funnest times of my life, man. Because you go from being a high school standout to at your high school team, you might see a double team, you might see a triple team, you might see a box of one, mm-hmm. but and you, you got all that firepower. I dare you to box and one me. I dare yeah. you to send a double at me. It's 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 it won't be effective. I mean, you you double at me, Kevin Durant will have forty. Yeah. <laughs> You doubling, you doubling Kevin, Jerome will have 30, Taiwan, Bobby, Cliff, I mean, Nasir Austin. Like, I mean, it was, it was just so fun, man, being able to get out there and play with those guys, all that talent, um, mm-hmm. you know, get out there and compete against those guys in practice. Because um, what that does is it gets you better. Yeah, you know, y'all, y'all legit better. had two amazing uh, starting fives on that team. Like yeah. legit start five on that and, team, and, and and that's actually man how you how, that's that's actually how we used to beat teams like five in five out, you know mo- most of the time when you go to your bench, it, it, the bench is lesser than your starters, but nah, not in this case we had we had five D one guys coming off the bench. Yeah, that's tough. You that's tough to match up against. Or... Yeah, very. You know what I mean? And I remember man, all some of these guys that we were playing against. Man, we were beating them by thirty. It's a it's a ball is life video out there. I think yeah, uh, with yeah. Blake Griffin team we played, man, yeah. we threw them out. It was it was ridiculous. You know what I mean? So you know, that was fun times, bro. Yeah, fun, I, I bet they were. I bet they were. <laughs> like y'all yeah. legit. You had snipers like Corey Marcus. Mm-hmm. You had Taiwan because nobody stand in front of him. You and nope. KD on the wing. Like that's <laughs> just Dyson. People, a lot of people don't know about Jerome Dyson. Like, he was a bucket. He was Watch he it. was tough man. With the UConn, yeah. uh, was a was a two way player. You, you know he could score and he could defend. Mm-hmm. So yeah, y'all had a squad man. And like I'm glad you brought up that video because that's what reminded me. I was like, bro, that team yeah. was crazy. Yeah, crazy. we was loaded. We was loaded, man. Yeah. <laughs> um, going forward, St. Charles, are you would you are you gonna get involved in the AAU team? Is that your thing? Or are you just focusing on high school right now? Yeah, you know, uh, a few a few teams have have expressed some interest. Mm-hmm. Um, I kind of like using my summers because you know AAU is you know really just the summer. Yeah. Um, I like to try to I like to use my summers, man, developing our guys. Okay. Um, you know, I, I do a lot of the skill development stuff my, with myself and uh, Coach Zeke Horn with the big fellas. Uh, yeah. I, I do a lot of the yeah. work with the guards. So um, I like to use that the, the summertime to kind of develop them. You know, get get them, um, 
you know, get them right. Um, I allow we allow our guys to play AAU. That, that 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 that's no problem. We allow you to play with any any AAU team that you feel comfortable. That's cool. We'll come to your game, sit back as a fan. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I haven't really thought about it. Um, maybe down the line, but right now I just like to use this time, this summertime, to um, you know just get our guys right, get them yeah. developed, yeah. and you know. So yeah, how was it? How do you – what are some of the things you've seen get better throughout, you know, when you was in high school? What has changed about the high school scene that you think is for, you know, the better good of the sport? What are some of those things? Um, Exposure. Uh-huh. Um, You know, you got guys like yourself. Huge shout-out to you, man, for doing your thing. You, you, Appreciate you. you, you yeah, you get you. national national notice, bro. Like, that's that's big. Appreciate it. Um, you know, you got Fan Eye. You got The Huddle. I mean, there's so many outlets. Shout-out to Kevin Latney doing his thing with Southern Yeah, Island. yeah. Um, you know, exposure. Um, it's funny that you say that. So we got a kid on our team that probably averaged four points a game, probably played in limited minutes. But as a senior, we try. We're, we're, of course, we're trying to help him get into school. Yeah. Um, we put together a one-minute clip. And that one-minute clip, somebody saw that at a school, and they wanted him, and they liked him. That's tough. And That's that tough. doesn't happen with social media. That doesn't happen without social media. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. And because you you would have to back when we were playing, and even before then, you have to come in person and see that player. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? It mm-hmm. wasn't one click of a button where all these highlights gonna be on social media and stuff like that. That, that right. Made, just t- times have just changed, and, and we're one of the, and we're at St. Charles. We're those coaches, man. That we don't. We're not like we don't. You know revert back to the old school ways in some sense. Like, we take social media seriously. I mean, as you yeah. see, like, we, yeah. we're posting our kids. We're giving them exposure. You know, I'm retweeting stuff. I'm, I'm pe- tweeting stuff out. Coach Campbell, Coach Z, Coach Walker, we all do Yeah, the that, whole you know? unit. Yeah, it's the whole yeah, unit. Yeah, we, 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 we do that. Um, and we use stay, we use uh, social media as a platform um, to get our kids, um, uh, you know, exposure. So, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely yeah. a big thing. Definitely a big thing that changed. Um, I had one more question. I moved upstairs, so I, le- I left. I forgot my laptop. I had one more question. I thought it was going to come back to me, but I, it slipped. Um, anything else you want to share with us while we while we on here? Cup, up, well, season? yeah, man. Well, you know, more people, more if more people don't know about St. Charles, man. Really, really find out. Like, really come see what we're about. You know what I mean? Really come see what we're about. We're in the SMAC conference. Um, it's some good teams in the SMAC. Like, we want the SMAC conference to do well because yeah. if those teams do well, that brings notice to our, to, to our conference. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't want to be in a conference where we're – obviously, we like dominating our conference, but when people looking like, oh, it's not credible because – they're in the smack. No, we want them to say, man, you know what? It's, it's some good teams in the smack. They're right. winning versus legit competition because at the yeah. end of the day, you know, we're playing these other schools. Like, we go play Middlesburg, and we go to the different Hoop Buzz events and stuff like that to get good bump. But mm-hmm. at the end of the day, when we playing against the smack, I want people to realize that, you know, the smack has good competition as well. But uh, we're, we're, we're going to continue to develop our kids. Um, we're going to continue to put them in situations to win, be successful in life. Um, not not just basketball. As you, I'm pretty sure you follow, man. You've seen us. We we go feed the homeless. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, we do stuff in our community. Like we just do stuff the right way. So, yeah. Um, you know, come out, man. Look at see what we've been been able to do. Um, take a take a six year school from losing the first 15 games of the season to now being the number one public school in the state of Maryland, man. That's that's, I mean, that's that's unheard a huge, of. Yeah, that that's a huge shout out to just our our kids and my coaching staff. You know, yeah. being able to being able to just change that culture and buy in, man. But but like I tell the kids all the time, you know, I can't shoot another jump shot for you. Coach Zeke Horn can't do another post move. Coach Brett Campbell can't slide, do another defensive slide. It's the kids that actually put themselves in that position. And we always talk about our kids putting their jersey in a better place. Well, our seniors we able to put those jerseys in a better place and hand it down to the young kids and keep it going, yeah. underclassmen. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, we've had a lot of success, man. Um, a lot of our kids have gone to school, um, you know, high major, low major, yeah. you yeah. know. Um, 
And uh, it's just a testament of the work that they put in, the work we put them through. Um, and being able to just be a has 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 been amazing to me because the kids are only going to get better and we're only going to get better. And um, like I told you, I, I can't stress it enough. I still got a sour taste in my mouth just as much as all the returners do about not being able to go up this Comcast playing that, that, that what if game against Polly, um, which by, might I add, I don't know if I said it on here and, and I, you know, whoever can quote me on this, but we would have got, we would have got, we 100% we would have got, yeah, hey. we, we would have got. So I like that. I like that. It was a, the thing people, so many people didn't understand. So like, so, you know, Pop, they were they started going on the national scene. They had the national oh, ranking yeah. and everything. Oh, yeah, so, you know, yeah. a lot of the buzz was like, oh, well, Polly got this, Polly got this. And I was telling people, like, you could think like that, but uh -huh. if you look at the matchup, you go look at both teams and you line uh -huh. them up, uh -huh. it's tough. It's oh, tough. I mean, I mean, you know, we, we, we've been the printing game scouted. We've watched over six or seven games of film. Um, the matchups were perfect. I mean, basketball is about matchups. Mm -hmm. And the matchups was perfect, man. The matchups was perfect, and I, and we really felt that we had a good game plan. You yeah. know, not not looking past Alvington, who we would have played in the semis, but you know, watching Alvington play a little bit and watching, you know, that they only really had one or two guys, not even really one guy. You know what I mean? They would have been in trouble. I, yeah. I feel like because we yeah. had guys. We had guys that we just had so many versatile defenders. Um, exactly. You know what I mean. So I think that that Polly game, a, a huge and huge respect for Polly, man. They they the champs. They 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 won that thing three years in a row. Yeah, yeah. But it was time for a new sheriff to be in town, and the year we were having, I, I think this year we would have definitely got him for sure. And who knows? Um, maybe we can give you all that game next year. Hopefully, we're in a situation yeah. to give you yeah. that game. I don't think it'll be the same magnitude, <laughs> um, you know, this year and, 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 you know, them having the kids that they had yeah, uh, and then we having the kids that we had. But uh, we expect to be back. Right. We expect to be back in that position. We expect to raise that SMAC title again. Um, huge shout-out to all the SMAC teams, man. But, you know, uh, we, we, we literally, you know, carry ourselves as the pride of uh, Waldo. And, um, you know, in order to beat the champs, you know, to go through the champs, you got to beat us. And at, this, and, and at this particular day, you know, we got that banner up there. So uh, we know we're going to get everybody's best shot next year. And, um, you know, we know we're going to be hunted. But one thing about our kids is uh, they don't never take days off, man. They, they, they understand that it's hard to repeat. And they understand that they're going to be the hunted. Yeah. But, you know, when you're the hunted and you're still hunting, oh, you're a top dog. And um, you know we're a top dog right now, and um, until sure. yeah, until other people uh, you know prove us wrong, then you know we'll we, we're gonna stay that top dog. And uh, but I, I expect for us to come out next year, man, and you know really um, repeat because of the, the 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 kids that I feel like were able to learn from our seniors, man. Yep. Okay. And I, I told like I told Coach John for the hundred time, like I'm gonna be down there, like. Cause I asked him, what you know, what's some things that we can do with media company? He said, just be there. So that's that's yeah. a commitment that I'm making to be down there at least a handful of time mm -hmm. to provide that exposure for the players down there. Yeah, man, definitely. And um, I like I like I like what Tobias does over there, man. It's a few smart coaches that I I, I kind of respect, um, what they're doing. Uh, he's one of them. I kind of mm -hmm. see, you know, he does his he does his thing with promoting his kids. Yeah, yeah um, his kids that. his kids play extremely hard for him. I will say that. Um, so uh, for him to get his kid to play hard for him like, like that, that's that's huge respect. Um, I know they they lost uh, a few guys, um, but I'm looking forward to see what you know they have coming back. Um, every year we go down, uh, they, we played them the first game of the season, so uh, we're probably we, we, we're yeah, gonna go there. Yeah, we're gonna go down. We're gonna go down there the first game of the season this year. I hear so many different good things about their fans and their crowd and how crazy it gets down there. So I'm kind of looking forward to that. But uh, yeah, man, he was the coach of the year this year. Um, him and the guy, the coach over there at uh, I think it's Great Mills. Great they got man, the yeah. coach of the year. Yeah, they got the coach of the year award. So um, you know, they they you know they get their teams to play hard. Um, and uh, so huge respect to them. 
But, um, yeah, man, the uh, basketball in Southern Maryland has officially changed. And um, I'm blessed to be a part of this staff, man, and uh, continue to change the culture of basketball in St. Charles. Yeah, yeah, continue to do that for sure. Like, being that person in the community, the school, all that. Like, we definitely need it this time. And that's yeah. a big respect to you and everybody else over there who, who's mm -hmm. playing that role for everyone in the community off the basketball court, you know? Yeah. Uh, and that. And that. Hey, quick, uh, this is this is kind of funny. I remember back at Friendly, this kind of off topic. I remember back at Friendly, man, mm -hmm. we used to be in math class and, Ms., and Mrs. Parker class, <laughs> Coach Parker. <laughs> yeah. And I used to remember the way you used to just joke, joan on people, man. <laughs> I'd be like, hey, if Pop look over here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know it was kind of off topic, but I remember those yeah, days nah. like it was yesterday. <laughs> yeah, man. It, it, I mean, those times was fun, man. Those times yeah. was fun. And, and, you know, I'm, I'm still that same way now, man, joking and laughing and having a good time. I'm, You know, I, I use a, a, a saying and a slogan of all good vibes, man. And mm -hmm. that's just, I just always been about that. You know what I mean? I always yeah, been about for sure. that, man. So, for sure. <laughs> then, you know, it's funny. I, I forgot that we had that math class together, man. <laughs> yeah. And that, that class used to be crazy. I, man, she was... Remember she was she was she was kicking me out or or yelling at me almost every day, man. It was crazy. It was crazy. You used to uh you never let off uh Alvin Brown. That was the funniest. Oh, man. Like, every, every chance you got, you was getting on Alvin. That I ain't gonna lie, I used to be dying in there. But you know, like back <laughs> when we was in school, you laugh too hard and it turned on you, so I used to try to look the other way. Yeah, you know how I go. Yeah, that yeah. was fun times, man. Yeah, it was. was. It was. Uh Pop, definitely appreciate you hopping on with us, man. Again, we definitely gonna be tuned in next year, coming down there, you know, seeing that, seeing that culture up up close and personal. Yeah, man, and, and, and you know, I appreciate it, and, and we appreciate people like yourself because you actually give us a platform. Because at the end of the day, if you didn't come out and record the games and then post it out on social media, our kids wouldn't get the exposure. So, you know, we appreciate having your, you know, social media outlets and media outlets like yourself come down there and um you know give out you know give our kids a platform like i said it's it's a lot of y'all man i've come up from yeah, you yeah. the huddle fan i i mean it's it's, it's so that. many everybody man. yeah it's so many and we appreciate y'all because at the end of the day i wish we had them type of social media and that type of media outlets when i was playing right, mean, right. things could have went totally different man but um i commend you on good on a on a hell of a job that you're doing too man because it started i'm pretty sure you started out with a with a plan and then each day you executed it and now man you're on the national stage i mean you know when you say six man people know they like oh no nah, he's legit like you know what yeah. i mean so uh keep doing what you're doing like i said man i like i told you this before our gym at the u is always open for you um come that's, on that's through that. come on through man you any type of access you want man you got it full access man with St. Charles basketball at the U. Come on through, man. I'm with it then. You ain't got to say no more. I'm with it. Next season, I'm in there. Yes, sir, man. Well, good talking to you, man. Um, You know, stay prayed up, man. We're going to get through these times. And yeah. Once this, once this, all this is over, I'm pretty sure I'm going to see you back on the basketball scene because I know, you know, anyway, it's good bump and good basketball. I know you <laughs> there. there. Yeah, fact. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, stay prayed up as well, bro. Definitely stay safe out there. Yes, sir, man. We'll talk soon, bro. All right, bro. Be easy. Okay, cool.